Hey everyone, welcome to Tactical Magic. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and I'm excited for this episode today because communication has been on the top of my mind lately. Um, how we talk to the people we love, how we interact with people we come across in the world, and how we show up to communicate and share our messaging in our business. All of these things are related, and I have an expert on the line with me today. So hang tight, we're going to come right back. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So Shea Sparks is an energetic catalyst and fearless communicator who sparks leaders in transition who are unclear to go from fear to fired up about their life and business. Through her renowned Spark Your Alpha program, Shay's audiences and clients experience more confidence, amplified emotional intelligence, and the spark that ignites their fearless action. As the CEO of, of Sparks of Fire International, she hosts the Power of Investing in People podcast, is the author of How to Get Your Voice Back, and is a certified fearless living coach and trainer, as well as the co-founder of the hashtag Firestarters book project. Welcome to the show, Shay. Mm, thank you so much for having me, Molly. That was, I, I forget that I write those things about my bio and I'm like, oh yeah, I did do that. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> I have that experience as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to have someone who has their, I don't know how to say hand in many honey pots, I guess. Your <laughs> DLOS does lots of stuff kind of person like me, which is awesome and fun. And yeah, we. I want to know first, how did you find your way to doing this work? What was the journey like for you? There's people listening to the show who are maybe just <sighs> getting ready to take the leap and believe they can run a business of their own or share their message. And I like to share a little bit about the journey first so they can get inspired about that. So, wow, that's a really long answer. So I'll try to cut it to the less uh, several hour version. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm a hairstylist and originally, and, you know, as being a hairstylist, if you have a hairstylist listing, you know that your clients tell you everything. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times we become chair therapist behind the chair therapist and people just sit down and tell us what's going on and ask for advice. And sometimes they need it and sometimes they don't. So during my own journey, I had found myself in an abusive relationship and was not sharing it with my clients. I wasn't sharing it with anyone. I never spoke about it. I just only like, talked about the good stuff. I never once told anyone how bad it was. So once I got out, I had the ability to get away. He was in a car accident and that's how I was able to step away and try to heal and move forward. And during my healing process, several things happened. Um, one was I, I immediately started to ask myself the question, what is it that I don't know that I need to know in order to move forward? And whatever that looks like is what I was thinking. Like Maybe that's my business, that's my career, that's my spiritual life, that's my health, that's my overall emotional and mental well-being. There's a lot of things that we don't know. In fact, one of the things that I learned about being in an, an abusive relationship is that it's familiar. And I had people say to me like, oh, you're so strong. How did you ever fall for that? You're too smart for that. And I'm like, you're right, I am. And that's why he was even more determined to bring me down. I think people who say those things don't realize that there are people who um, pray against strong women. Well, it's so much more satisfying, I think, to dominate someone who is powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then the manipulation that started and, you know, continued to go and the gaslighting and we all have words for him now, the narcissist, all of that. At the time I was going through it, none of that was in the mainstream. None of that was even talked about. But you get so caught up in the the every day that you're like, wait, did I really do? Did I do what he said I did? So I had to really peel away the layer of the onion that I am, that we all are, and heal. And as I did that for myself, I would go to the salon and do my clients. And, you know, a normal conversation was, you know, what's what's new with you since we've last talked and they would share and then they would ask, you know, what's new with you? And I'd be like, oh, I learned that I'm emotionally unavailable. 
And they were like, what? What does that mean? And so it was funny because in my mind, I'm like, this is every day. Everyone else in the world knows this information, but me. Mm. And as I learned is like, most people don't have these kind of conversations. So I said about emotionally unavailable, I said, I was unwilling to ask for what I need because I didn't know I had needs, nor was I willing to voice my opinion, my concern, my feelings. And I was not willing to ask for help because I was not willing to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. and share. And they were like, oh, wow, I do that with my boss or I do that with my spouse or I do that with my mom. And so then, you know, four to six weeks would go by, they would come back and they're like, you know, when I would say, so what's new? And they're like, you know, what you said to me last time really impacted me. And I went home and I had that conversation with my, my, whoever, my, my boss, my coworker, my, my spouse, my child. And it changed. It started to shift our relationship. And I really started to dive into what if we change the way we spoke to people? How does that shift the other person? without trying to control them, but it comes from a place of really trying to understand who they are, but also from a place of getting your point across and being understood. And what does that look like? And how does that show up not only in our our personal life and our relationships? Like with me, it completely changed the way I was with my dad. And my dad had become my best friend in the last five years of his life because of that being able to change the way I communicated and taking away an assumption, an expectation, a desire for a, I mean, an expectation for a desired outcome. I would just have a conversation and be open to wherever it took rather than having an attachment to what I was hoping he would say. Mm -hmm. Which is a very different way to come at a conversation. Yeah, it comes from more intentional. It comes from me being setting the tone rather than it being confrontational or blaming or shaming or anything like that. It was or out of anger. You know, first I had to forgive him and then I had to be I was able to move forward. And I just started to notice again, here I am sharing all of this with my hair clients. And I'm talking with, you know, leaders of companies and leaders in the military, and I'm talking with them. And I'm like, so what if you change the way that you spoke to your team? And they were like, what do you mean? (laughs) I'm like, well, what if you came from a place of this is what you need done, but you're asking them that if they would be willing to do this task and instead of expecting them to do it at a certain time, you literally give the parameters and then you come from how can I support you in doing this work for me? It comes from a, a, a different a p- different place. And so they would go and practice, take, I call it fearless action now. But at the time I did, I'm like, oh, they went and practiced. They came back and they were like, wow, my team really listened to me. Wow, my kids, it took a while because they didn't really understand what I was doing. But my kids, they finally started to listen to me. So it's funny to see how when we just come from a, a, a place of empathy and a place of understanding and a place of more an investment rather than attachment, it starts to overflow onto uh, other people rather than uh, trying to control environment. So it's just interesting. That's how the conversation kind of started happening. And the fearless communicator kind of came out of that. I love it. And one of the thought leaders I first got hooked on when I was early on in my business was Brendan Burchard. And he talks about if you want to change something in your life, it's only two ways that that will happen. Either something new comes into your life and that you can respond to or whatever, or something new comes out of you. Mm -hmm. And this is like the perfect example of that is the, the circumstances of the business that that leader was walking into or the circumstances of the family are not changing at all. Right. And then you walk in and what you're bringing forth is so different that everything else changes in response to it. And I think sometimes it can be intimidating to think we have the power to do that because it's a lot easier to think that we don't. It's a lot easier to think that, oh, this is just the way my life is. This is just the way my relationship with that person is. This is just the way this is how we operate. This is who we are. And Mm -hmm. the truth is how we interact with other people and how we take the initiative to learn to interact differently has the capacity to change everything. I love that's why your marketing is so 
um, engaging that it's the fire in your life. It's the like spark inside of you that can have more space to ignite when you choose to create that space through your willingness to be the, the leader in a conversation, your willingness to be vulnerable, your willingness to ask for what it is you need and create a new system of communication between you and literally anyone in your life. There, like you said, you did it with your dad. There is no relationship that's been too set in stone to have this new like influx of clarity and connection. And like you said, without the desired outcome, oh, if I say this to my dad, he's going to treat me differently. Well, you don't know that. But how you feel about him when you're actually willing to express your truth in that moment, that can feel different. And that's that's like really powerful stuff. So tell us, I mean, you gave us some good examples already, but how do you see this working with the clients who come to work with you and yeah what's the place that they're usually at when they come find you and what do you notice as they're moving through working with you yeah notice uh no i notice first of all is that they're they're ready they're kind of like oh yeah there's this this thing that keeps happening to me over and over again and i'm like yes i love a pattern first of all <laughs> so let's talk about that pattern and the one thing that I learned during my healing process is that our childhood experiences shape our adult decisions. And so when this pattern shows up, it's like, okay, great. Let's, let's dive into that and find out where that first came to you and where else is this showing up in your life. And a lot of times it's like, oh, it's showing up in my, in my business. I'm having a difficulty marketing my business. And then we kind of dig a little deeper, like what's stopping you, that kind of thing. And most of the time it has something to do with fear. And so for an example, if we, when a, a client comes to work with me and they have a business, they're like, I want to, I want to start a podcast, but nobody will listen to me. Or I want to write a book, but I don't know where to start. And then it's like, okay, great. So where have you been told that you, no one would listen to you. Like, where else have you been told that? And they were like, well, no one. And then I'm like, okay, so is there someone in your past? And then when I bring it to them that way, it's the, oh, wait, you want me to get like real here and mm -hmm. personal and not just talk superficial business? I'm like, yeah. So where else in your past did you hear that no one will listen to you? Or you had an example where no one did listen to you, or you felt like that. And most of the time it happens between like four and 11 years old, something in their, their life experience happened and they came from the uh, awareness that, oh, that happened. So no one listens to me. Mm. So now they live their life, not even knowing it. It's all by, uh, you know, it's all subconscious. They start to live their life that no one listens to them. And then you're like, okay, so now we have to redo that programming a little bit. We have to do some mindset shifting and then we have to do some practice. So go practice talking to people that you don't know and see if they, you know, ask them what they remembered from the conversation. And they're like, what? You want me to do what? It's like, yeah, you have to start being vulnerable now. Because if you want this to shift, then you have to do the work. If you don't want it to shift, then feel free to stay in the path that you're on. But if you really want freedom to be able to move through this block, this blind side, the blind side that's hitting you, this blind spot that's hitting you, then you have to be willing to do the work. And that to me is, is at what ends up showing up is people are like, oh, I was referred to you and I'm ready to figure this out. Yeah. 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 So there's like stages of this process. I mean, discovering there's a pattern in your life awesome. Great step one. Yeah. Or noticing, Hey, I have this limiting belief or I'm like, I want this thing. I desire to move in this direction, but there's a story in my way that I can't, or I shouldn't, or I'm better off if I don't. And then you get to see where that came from. Is that, is that still true? And then it's almost like you have homework now where you get to start towing that line, stepping like, as in as small of steps as you can, or as big of steps as you're willing to start stepping over that threshold to look for evidence that that deeper truth that you think is true, isn't actually true mm -hmm. and start saying, you know, okay, no one wants to listen to me. Well, what if I asked someone to listen to me, would they do it? Now there's some evidence. Okay. Maybe they would, 
Or, you know, what if I shared this with someone and they said I would listen to that podcast? Okay, well, then now I have this growing bank of evidence that says actually that false belief that I've been living with as my truth may not actually hold hold up if I were willing to challenge it. And then as you do that, your worldview has to crumble and shift and rearrange to accommodate the more present and real truth of the evidence that you can't deny. And that trickles out, like you said, it trickles out into so many other places because Mm -hmm. we, we say, okay, I want to have this podcast, but no one will listen to it. How many like thousands of other experiences are you having in your life that are dictated or indicated or Mm -hmm. impacted by that story that you haven't been willing to address or challenge yet? And we do this all the time. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And even more so we don't realize that how it would feel to be heard, right? So what if we were listened to? What would that give you? How would you feel in that moment? And so really then it becomes about tapping into that emotion, be, being able to, to propel you forward into the actions rather than just being able to go, oh yeah, I took this action. It didn't work. So clearly it, I, I'm proving that nobody will listen. It's like, no, no. So there's a process of how things happen. It's first circumstance. And then that circumstance happens to us and that creates some th- thought. And the thought is what drives our, our um, feelings and our feelings is what drive reactions and or our actions. And then we get results. Well, if we want different results, we have to back it up all the way to our thought. So our thought is what mindset, what intention would I want to set in order to have the feeling that I want to create? that would propel me into the action that will get me the results that I want. Yeah, this stuff is pure magic. I love that we're having this conversation on Tactical Magic Podcast because this is like some of the serious, most serious magic that we can do in our lives is look at those stories, look at those beliefs and either learn how or get support in figuring out how to navigate that, to navigate what that limitation is. And I mean, I have, there are so many examples in my own life where I noticed hey, here's this fear or here's this belief. And I can see it so clearly that it's the thing standing in my way. And what can I do to toe that line, to step over it, to practice living as if that weren't true for me anymore Mm -hmm. and then see what changes in my life. And I mean, I can give a silly example. I could give a vulnerable example that it's not really that silly, but I used to have a debilitating fear of uh, being seen, of being mm. on stage, of being in the spotlight or having too much attention because I had a lot of stories that I wasn't good enough, that no one, mm. again, wanted to listen to me, that I was wrong, just innately wrong. And mm. that's all for my yeah evil stepfather that I grew up with. And all those stories made me really afraid to be on a microphone or to mm. be the one talking in front of a room when everybody's listening. And yet I started my business and I knew that I wanted to lead workshops and webinars and I wanted to like make a bigger difference than I could make in a small office with just one-on-one clients for the rest of my life. And so there was this contrast, this desire Mm -hmm. of what I thought I knew I was stepping into and this debilitating fear of like, seriously, if someone handed me a microphone, I wanted to cry. And I did many times at certain (laughs) events. Um, Yeah. So then I was like, okay, what can I create as like a playground to push yes. this edge. And for me, I started going to Toastmasters yes. like um, fiercely. I, there's <laughs> to- When you join Toastmasters, it's like a speaking workshop that you can go to in your, there's all over the world. And you can just keep going once a week and basically practice standing in front of a room and talking about silly stuff and true stuff, whatever you want to talk about. And they give you two manuals that are supposed to last you like a year or two to work through them. You work through the speech manual, then you work through the leadership manual. I finished both manuals in nine months because I was like, I am doing this. And then I never went back again. They congratulated me for finishing those two workbooks. And I didn't need to go back again, I felt like, because the thing I went there for was to overcome that fear, overcome the story saying I shouldn't or I couldn't or I can't. And that went away. And now Mm. I can't wait to get on a microphone. I see a microphone and I'm like, get me at it. I create my own events just so that I can be able to share my story and tell people. I mean, I have two podcasts, of course, I want to talk to people and Mm -hmm. share my message. But that is a dramatic shift from who I was seven or eight years ago. And it takes initiative, you know, it takes Mm -hmm. that awareness of saying, hey, I'm just willing to let someone know that this thing is in my way. 
And it could be letting yourself know, like I didn't go reach out for a lot of help with that thing. I just joined Toastmasters, which was kind of like reaching out for help, I guess. Mm -hmm. But acknowledging that that thing you're noticing is in the way and you're willing to do whatever the hell it takes to get it out of your way now. Sometimes it takes mentorship. Sometimes it takes therapy. I think coaching is a really great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. But what else is possible beyond that? You know? Right. Who would you be if that weren't true for you anymore? Right. And how that trickles out into everything. And talk about the relationship between how doing this for your business and for your personal growth can show up in your relationships or how doing this in your relationships can impact your business too. Yeah. So like for this person to think nobody will listen to me. And then it the next question is after we figured out when the, you know, at when at what age all this happened. And how they want to show up and what would that give them if someone listened to them is, okay, where in your life, in your personal life, do you feel like someone's not listening to you? And then that's when it's like, oh, wait, there's, yeah, I don't, my spouse doesn't really listen to me or my kids or my mom, you know, it's always somebody. And it's like, okay. And listening to really being understood, listened to, that's a huge need, huge need on the hierarchy of needs. That's a huge need. Feel like you're belonging. That's a huge need. Besides the, you know, the water, food, shelter, but our needs are to have love and understood and feel like we belong. So to have that limiting belief affects us in so many different ways because, oh, if I'm not understood, am I really belonging? Am I really connecting with others? Because Maybe they're, I'm, I'm just, stand, I'm just a person standing in a room full of people, but nobody's really listening to me. Even if I'm on stage, maybe nobody's listening to me, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so let's take you back to your family and how can you shift the conversation just like we did in your business of coming from a place of intention? What would you be willing to practice in with your family? Are you willing to ask for what you need? Like, Hey, I need to have a conversation with you so I can understand if you're hearing me, if you're actually listening to me. Oftentimes, these are skills. These are tools that we have never, ever in our lives even thought about, let alone no one taught us how to do that. It goes back to boundaries where we didn't even know we had needs in the first place. But if you ask someone, this is what I need, are you willing to have that conversation with me? That comes from a different place. It also comes from a book that I love called Nonviolent Communication. Mm -hmm. It comes from, I feel when you this, <laughs> I feel blank when you do this, are you willing to talk about this with me? And most of the time, they have no idea that they're doing that thing, nor that you're feeling that way when you do that thing. And so it goes back to what you said before, the stories that we tell ourselves. So are you willing to have that conversation with your partner of the story that I'm telling myself about when you walk in front of me, for an example, is that you're ignoring me? Hmm. And this because this just happened to me recently and I didn't even realize I was in the in it until afterwards. And the my friend turned around and he's like, I'm not ignoring you. I'm walking ahead to protect you and to clear a path because we were on a crowded sidewalk. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I was like, oh, he's ignoring me. Right. And so when I was able now, I didn't feel I didn't think I felt a certain way. But in the moment, it was just being willing to say it. And then when he gave me clarity, which is the biggest thing that people forget is that we need that clarity. So we have to ask the question a little bit deeper, like what does, tell me what that means to you. So what is ignoring, what is be feeling ignored mean to you? What is protecting mean to you? What is it that you're actually trying to do? Oh, okay. So, so as, as a friend, you're trying to protect me. And as uh, someone who is in an abusive relationship, who I felt ignored. Because I literally couldn't see anything because you're so big and you're like a wall walking ahead of me. So that's, the, again, just a part of the process is, you know, first we have to kind of identify what it is, see where it's happened in your past and see it in one area. And then we can see it in all the areas of where it's hitting. Because again, in the blind spot in your business is also in your personal life and the personal life 
is also the blind spot in your business. So maybe they come to me about their family and then we see, oh yeah, as we're talking, oh yeah, this also happens in my in my business too. And it's like a whole language. It's like a way of communicating and like learning the framework for how to say things so that they're not violent is why it's called nonviolent communication. Yes. So they're not immediately confrontational or create a lean out before you even get the words out of your mouth. And it's that's why they call it emotional intelligence because it's it's almost like this whole other skill set that none of us are really taught, even just down to the basics of what are our common needs that humans yes. have and what yes. are common emotions that we're feeling. We're so many of us, most of society, I think, is not adept at naming the emotion that they're currently experiencing or the need that they currently have that maybe isn't being met. And so the one of the cool things about that nonviolent communication book, which is by Marshall, I feel like it's right here. I forget who I can't remember either. Yeah. Well, <laughs> look, look it, it up. up not my yeah. communication. It's a brilliant book. But there's a cheat sheet in the back of the book, and you can find the cheat sheet online too of most common needs and most common emotions. And having those, I printed it out and laminated it when I was first reading that book to put it <laughs> in my wallet and be like, okay, I'm feeling something. And I pulled it out and be like, okay, it's uh, one of these. It's uh, maybe I'm feeling fear and maybe I'm feeling a need for connection. And mm -hmm. then I could communicate that more. One of my friends, um, Nathan McTague is really brilliant with some of these things. And he added to that nonviolent communication sort of phrase that instead of when you blank, it's set to say when this happens, mm, because it yeah. almost takes them out of it completely. Yep. Now you're just telling an experience that you had. They might notice that they're the ones who created that experience or, or was part of that experience. But instead of making it about them doing it, it's like when this thing happens mm. and that sort of creates even more possibility that they can connect and be there for you in that moment, which is awesome. This episode went by way too fast. <laughs> There is a, <laughs> yes, lot, a, a lot to unpack here for sure. And I just want to highlight how important it is that if we don't have that language, if we don't have that skill set, that it is so okay. And I think tr hugely transformational to reach out to someone to get guidance on that, to get mm -hmm. support with having those, those conversations and doing it in a really empowered and clear way so that you feel good about what you said. And regardless of the outcome, you show up as the person you want to be in those moments. And that can take some coaching. That can take some support of someone who's done it before a lot of times having your back. So um, I'm just grateful you're in the world doing what you're doing, Shay. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that there's people probably listening to this who are going to reach out which brings us to the point of how can people best find you and, and follow up and get some of your magic in their lives? I, I, I love that. Magic. Yes. Yes. Magic. Uh, you can find me at my website at shaysparks.com. That's S-H-A-S-P-A-R-K-S.com. And you can uh, connect with me on social media there, or you can go to your favorite social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and you can find me at I am Shay Sparks on Instagram or Shay Sparks on Facebook and LinkedIn. Awesome. Um, thank you for having me. This was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. And Shay is spelled S-H-A for those who are yes. looking. Yeah. With a fancy line over it. Um, but, <laughs> but you don't have on, to put that in. Yeah. <laughs> not on social media. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And again, thank you everyone out there for listening. Um, what are any last, we've shared so much wisdom, but any last words of wisdom that you want to share people, leave people with? Mm, yes. Cause this showed up as when you were saying something, when someone hurts your feelings by what they said, it's not about them. It's that the words that they used triggered you. Mm. So it's not about them hurting you. It's the words they used triggered you. Oh, really powerful distinction. Yeah. That yeah. one step of separation makes it no longer about the fight. It's about the feeling you have. That's yes. like exactly where we want to hang out when we're triggered. Looking yes. at our own stuff. What can we change? What can we say? Awesome. I feel really good about this. And I'm also really grateful for the vulnerability you shared in the story of your own life. And I've been through similar relationships and I've witnessed so many of those mm -hmm. kinds of relationships in my loved ones. And it's a powerful thing to name and acknowledge and also a powerful thing to find your way out of. So especially anyone who feels like they may be in an abusive relationship and they can't talk about it to anyone, this is a safe place. And Shay is a great guide 
So reach out and see what else is possible. Um, and as always, if you want to learn more, go to tacticalmagicpodcast.com. If you want to become a sponsor of the show, a Patreon, we've got some links on that page for you to check out and support us. We appreciate it. And um, whatever happens, keep asking big questions and taking bold action because you are here for a reason. Bye.